hey guys if you are new in my channel please kindly click on the subscribe button to encourage me thank you classification of white blood cells note that white blood cells are also known as leukocytes and we can broadly classify them into two groups the first group are called the a granulocytes these are the type of white blood cells without visible granules when looked at under microscope then the second group are the group called granulocytes which is opposite of a granulocyte. They have physical granules in their cytoplasm. The granulocytes can be subdivided into three groups. We have the neutrophils, the eosinophils, and the basophils. Note that neutrophils are actually the most numerous of all the white blood cells. They are very important in fighting bacteria infection. We are still going to discuss them later. Eosinophils. Are the second group of the gran of the granulocyte and basophils is the third group of the granulocytes. The a granulocyte can be broadly grouped into two categories: the monocytes and the lymphocytes. Now let's pick each of these blood cells one after the other and talk about their characteristics and their important functions. Neutrophils are the most abundant of all the white blood cells. You should always remember that. It's a member of the granulocyte family. It's a polymorph. Since you know it's a member of the granulocyte family, so that means you know that the cytoplasm will have fine granules. It is a nucleated cell. All white blood cells actually have nucleus. The nucleus is having two to five lobes. So many is having many lobes. And the diameter is about 10 to 12 micrometer. Note, neutrophil form an important component of the innate immunity as it's part of the early line of defense against infection. It is actually a very powerful white blood cell when it comes to fighting of bacterial infection. Eosinophils is another white blood cell that we must talk about. It's also a granulocyte, meaning it has granules in the cytoplasm. Now, unlike the neutrophil, in which gra in whose granules is going to take up both the acidic and the basic dye. The eosinophils actually stain only with acidic dye, which is why it will appear pink or red when it is looked upon under microscope. Note that the nucleus of the eosinophil is actually bilobed, not multilobed. That is the basic way to differentiate apart from the color of the cytoplasm. That's another thing distinguishing factor between eosinophils and neutrophils and note that eosinophils are very important in fighting parasitic infection and of course we can never forget to talk about their role in allergic reaction eosinophils are not as numerous as neutrophils they only account for about two percent of the white blood cells unlike the neutrophils they account for more than 40 percent of the white blood cells. actually Neutrophils actually accounted for 40 to 60 percent of the white blood cells. Another one we should talk about is the basophils. Basophil is another very important granulocyte, actually, the third member of the granulocyte. This is the least abundant of all the white blood cells. Note the most abundant of all the white blood cells are the neutrophils, accounting for 40 to 60 percent. The least abundant of all the white blood cells are actually the basophils accounting for only about 0.5 to 1 percent all right the basophils are also granulocytes they are basophils because they stain with basic dye the same way neutrophils are called neutrophil because they stain with both dye so we assume they are neutral which which is the reason they get they got their name neutrophils basophil stains with basic dye many they love base basophil they stain with basic dye and they also have granules in there cytoplasm they are very they are also bilobed unlike 
the neutrophils that is multi-lobed. They are bilobed like the eosinophils, and they are very, very important in wound healing. They also play a significant role in allergic reaction. Then the next thing we should talk about are the lymphocytes. Of course, always remember that lymphocytes can be grouped into three categories, the B cells, the T cells, and the natural killer cell. Always remember the B cells, the T cells, and the natural killer cell. The B and T cell, they play some role in adaptive immunity, but the, T cell, but the natural killer cells is a key member of the innate immunity. Among the lymphocytes, is only the natural killer cells that do not play any role in adaptive immunity. Instead, it's a member of the innate immunity. Okay, now, nuclear lymphocytes, just like monocytes, do not have granules in their cytoplasm, which is why they are called agranulocytes, meaning absent of granules in the cytoplasm. Unlike the neutrophils, the basophils, and the eosinophils that we call granulocytes, remember the granulocytes are also called the polymorphs, and they are the ones with more than one nucleus, which is why you call them polymorphs. Although, usually, when people are saying polymorphs, they want to use that name for neutrophils, but it's actually for all of them because they have more than one nucleus in their cytoplasm. But this a granulocyte group where we have lymphocytes and monocytes, they only have one nucleus in their cytoplasm, although the nucleus is larger and it almost occupies the entire cytoplasm of the lymphocytes and the monocyte. Now, for the lymphocytes, they are found mainly in the lymphoid tissue and they are very, very important in fighting bacteria infection like tuberculosis and viral infection. Note, how are they different from neutrophils in the nature of the bacteria they defend the body against? They fight more of larger bacteria like tuberculosis. Another example of larger bacteria they, fi they fight is the salmonella, the causative agent for typhoid disease. And I've, and I've stated earlier that they are in three, they can be subclassified into three categories, the B cells, the T cells and the natural killer cells. The B and the T cells, they are called B and T cells because of the site of maturation. T cells mature, matures in the thymus, which is why it is called T cell, meaning thymus cells. B cells are called B cells because they will mature in bone marrow, meaning bone marrow cell or bursa derived cells. And they are the major cellular component of the adaptive immunity. Note, adaptive immunity is also called the acquired immunity. We have said that before. T cells are involved in cell-mediated immunity, while the B cells are involved in immoral immunity. What is the difference between cellular-mediated immunity and immoral immunity? Basically, cell-mediated immunity involves either the white blood cell directly or the T cell directly attacking the cell that are foreign intruders that find themselves into the body or they present them to the cell that will produce antibody which are the b cells cell mediated immunity involves the cellular the cells directly attacking the foreign organism or presenting them to the cells that are going to produce antibodies which are the b cells why immoral immunity is called immoral because it involves production of antibodies. So T cells are the main cell for cell mediated immunity, while the B cells are the main cell for humoral immunity. We are going to discuss the mechanisms extensively in my next video where, where I will discuss immunity, various types of immunity, the innate, the acquired, and all the chemicals, the cells that are involved in the two of them. Note that the main function of the B and the T cells is that they have a special recognition system that ensure they are able to pick cells that are foreign to the body, thereby attacking and destroying them and preventing us from having infection or dangers. 
All right, the next thing we should talk about is the natural killer cells. They are called natural killer cells because they do not require any form of activation before they can quickly attack what is for it. Unlike the B cells and the T cells, they require something to activate them before they start acting natural killer. Meaning naturally, what they do is they identify cells that are foreign. Immediately, they're able to identify cells that are foreign. They directly attack them, which is why they get the name natural killer cell. And which is also why they are part of the innate immunity. Because it is natural for them to identify cells that are foreign. Now, these cells that are foreign may be host cell that has been infected with virus. You remember, by the time a cell is infected with virus, it's still foreign because it's no longer healthy. The natural killer cell will attack and kill them. Apart from that, tumor cells, they are sick cells, so they are no longer normal. They can also attack them and also remove them from the body. The aim is actually to limit the spread of the viral infection. And in case of cancer cells, the aim is to ensure the cancer cells don't end up destroying other cells. So natural killer cells are very important in destroying viral infected cells and tumor cells. How are they able to achieve this? They are able to achieve this because they look for what is called the major histocompatibility complex type 1, MHC1, major histocompatibility complex class 1. This is always present in the normal cells that are present in the body and this will be missing in this type of cells that they are going to attack. All right, let's quickly talk about monocytes. Monocyte is the second example of the A granulocyte family, the partner to the lymphocytes. And in terms of number, they are the third most abundant of all the white blood cells. Remember, the first most abundant of all the white blood cells are the neutrophils, followed by the lymphocytes, followed by the monocytes. The least abundant are the basophils. Note that these monocytes, they do not stay for so long in the blood. After a while, what will they do? They will move into the tissue and become what is called the macrophage system. So anytime you hear the word macrophages, always remember that they are monocytes that are migrated from the blood into the tissue. That's why we call them tissue macrophage system. Then they can stay for a longer period in the tissue unlike in the blood where they can only stay for let's say two three maximum five days immediately after that time it's either the body system remove them or they move into the tissue and form part of what we call the tissue macrophage system so it is monocyte that will develop and become the macrophages all right important things you know about the monocyte i've said that they are the second part of the egg granulocyte they are large cells larger than all the other white blood cells. They are the largest with diameter of about 14 to 18 micrometer. Just like the lymphocyte, they also have one nucleus and the nucleus is large. It will almost occupy the entire size of the cytoplasm. Note, they are also phagocytic in nature and they are important part of the innate immunity. Always remember the phagocytic White blood cells are the monocytes and the neutrophil. The member of the A granulocyte that is phagocytic in nature is monocyte. The member of the sorry, the member of the A granulocyte, I mean those that lack granules, the member of the A granulocyte that is phagocytic in nature is the monocyte. Why the member of the granulocyte family that is phagocytic in nature is the neutrophil. These two form the first line of defense anytime. Any intruder escape into the body, it is these two that initially attack. And from there, they now hand they will now hand them over to other system that is going to act against them. One important thing you should always remember about the monocyte is that when they get to the tissue, they have different names. For example, we have the one that is called the Kufa cells. We have the one that is called the Kufa cells. Then what are the Kufa cells? Kufa cells are the monocytes that are found within the, within the liver. Kufa cells, they are the monocytes 
of the liver, kufa cells, K-U-P-F-F-E-R, kufa cells, they are the monocytes that reside within the liver. Another name for them is Browick cells. You can, they, are, can, they can also be called Browick cells or stellate sinusoidal cells. Note that they form the majority of the tissue macrophage system, accounting for about 80 to 90 percent of the tissue macrophage system, which is the reason why it will take a serious injury to damage the liver. Before liver can be completely damaged, more than 90 percent of the liver would more, more than 90 percent of the liver cells must have gone why because these kufa cells always prevent infection and some other things that can lead to tissue injury another one that we should talk about is the dust cells dust cells are monocytes that are now residing within the lungs so more or less, the macrophage system of the lung is called the dust cells. Why do we call them dust cells? You can imagine now, you breathe in, you breathe in air, you breathe out air. Part of what you breathe in include water vapor and dust. These cells trap dust and ensure that they do not settle into the lungs to cause chemical pneumonia. Another one that we should talk about, another important example is what you call the Langerhans cell. Langerhans cells is Langerhans cells are also examples of the tissue macrophage system. Where do we find them? We find them majorly in the skin. However, it is important for you to note that we can also have the Langerhans cells in the spleen, in the bone marrow, and the lungs. All right. The next thing we should talk about is a table that summar that will summarize all the key features of these various kind, various types of white blood cells. Thank you for watching this amazing video. I am so honored.